Hi guys, I wanted to create a video about a new product that I'm excited about. Um, it's been on my mind for quite some time and I finally got around to engineering it. Um, it's centered around Gecko Drive's G251X stepper drivers, but I can modify the design to fit virtually any stepper driver, depending you give me the dimensions and the chassis it's going in. Um, if you're not familiar with the G251X, guys, these are the same drives that are in Gecko's infamous G540. The only difference being the G540 utilizes the, the drive without the screw terminal block to mount your terminals and the aluminum base heatsink that also doubles as the mounting platform. Um, Gecko G540 is an excellent driver. This takes the Gecko to an entirely different level in that you can go past the four axis format. Um, that being said, once you go past the four axis format or even sometimes the three axis format, you have trouble as a guy designing the system and finding a chassis that is not going to break the bank when you're looking for more horizontal real estate. Well, me dealing with computers for the last 15 years as a hobby and building really high-end systems, I've utilized a lot of high-end PC chassis and the engineers in these chassis usually use a modular design and they start getting into more of the vertical real estate because you tend to never run out of vertical real estate. It's typically only the horizontal real estate. So that being said, this is how this all came to fruition. I wanted to transpire that technology into CNC controllers and I think I accomplished it. Um, how this pretty much is set up to work, I'll cover it from the base up. Um, it's a really simple design. I mean, um, pin in the camera and right, check everything out, see how this all works. It's really, really basic. Um, how it works, essentially, this piece of warped wood, um, please pardon me, it's all I had in the shop is scrap, is about 3 millimeters in thickness, which would translate to roughly 16 gauge for your chassis bottom. Um, you would drill two holes in the chassis to support the screws as the guide pins in the vertical plane. Once the two holes are drilled, you insert the screws naturally, put the nuts down, that'll hold the screws in the vertical plane, and then you would insert your spacers. And why we have these spacers here is to allow the drives, not just clearance from the base guys, but for heat sinking. Um, a lot of guys do not even think about this until it becomes an issue. Um, it is an end-user option. Gecko leaves it as an end-user option. I don't. I think it's something that anybody who's investing this kind of money and wants a system to be as reliable and as precise as possible, use your head, do it right the first time, and it'll leave a lot of hassles later on. So that's where this spacing came in. <coughs> um, the next thing was I wanted to make it to where most guys don't start in a six axis platform. It's possible, but it's not relatively seen often. So the beauty of this system, and I'm gonna show you how quick it is in real time to use, is just take a thumb nut, undo one, undo two. Now guys, remember, you don't have to use a lot of tension when you're installing these. Um, the drives weigh virtually a couple ounces, so there's no real weight here. These are galvanized steel brackets. Um, once they are removed, you remove your spacers and you've just converted yourself back to a three axis system. Now, most guys start in three axis and then they say, hey, you know what? I've already gone three. I'm ready to go four. I'm ready to go five, maybe even six, but I need a place to start. That's the beauty of this system is you can modify your chassis one time by mounting this system in it and then just simply adding the brackets at will to support as many drives as you require. Now, that being said, you can see the whole system in the brackets is set up. So basically, you're ready to mount by the time you get this, other than drilling the two holes in the base of your chassis. Um, I can't emphasize the simplicity of this system. And, and one of the things that you'll typically find is that if you were to add a system of of more than three axis, especially when you get into building 
a controller where you're dealing in four, five, uh, anything in that realm, usually you're going to run out of horizontal space. And with good reason, you need to space the drives appropriately so that you can have wiring in place, you can have the cooling in place. It gets tedious. Well, the beauty of this, I'm just going to reassemble this real quick and then I'll go over one of the neater features too because a lot of guys don't think like this but I'm going to clue you in on something is that you can use this chassis in a vertical plane but you could also use this in a horizontal one so really it's up to the end user to utilize the space that is available in this chassis and here is the thing I think that cannot be overlooked guys um, the brackets are five inches a little over five inches in length the beauty of this system is it's only in total three and a quarter inches high. Now when you think about that, actually I'm wrong, it's probably a little more than that or less depending upon the thickness of your chassis. It's going to increase or decrease the spacing up here for when you put your brass thumb nut on, on the top bracket. But if you really think about it overall, <clears throat> you can put six axis now in a chassis that normally you'd be lucky to fit three axis in on top of the fact that you be able to modify it at will. I think that really covers everything in, in a nutshell. It's very similar to PCs of today. I mean, you want to put a new CD-ROM in, you simply, uh, you know, now it's not even screwed anymore. You simply just press the tabs, slide it in, you're good. You need another one, it's probably got tabs beneath it. You can go down the next drive down. Um, this is the same principle. It works flawless. Um, it's it's very very sturdy. I mean, I made sure that it would definitely support the drives. It would definitely support the weight of the drives with the heat sinks. I think that's super important. And like I said, the spacing is set up. You can see there's little spacers here. Quarter inch spacing is mainly for clearance on the drives, so you're not hitting anything with the drives. It's very easy to to maintain. Something else that this gives you the option to do, which most guys never even think of, is when your controller is built and it's being used. Every month or so, you should go in and try to clean your drives. Um, this makes it all too easy to do, um, especially if you're using my 3.5 mil spacing plugs where you convert all your terminals to plugs rather than using individual wiring. I'll do a video for that next, most likely. Um, but I think you get now a pretty good understanding of how usable this system is. Um, and for a guy who's just designing his system or somebody that's thinking about modifying his system, I really think if you're thinking about what drives to use again, the G251X history is long um, and it, it really has been around forever. Gecko stands by everything. It's probably one of the top drives. And needless to say, that's why I really focused around these drives. And with a six axis capability, I really don't see much more need. If you needed to go more than that, you simply buy more brackets and we, you can incorporate where you want to put it in your chassis. Um, overall, I think you guys get the drift. I'm going to try to create some more videos to really emphasize some more of my product designs. I've got a couple new designs coming out. I do have a chassis coming out now with this design, so keep an eye out for that. It's going to be really, it's, it's actually one of the neatest things I think I've ever come up with. Um, it features a power distribution unit that's fully toolless. Um, everything. It's it's really going to be advanced feature, 48 volt, 12 and a half amp power supply. Um, I look forward to bringing it to you, but I, I hope this pretty much answered a lot of questions. And if you do have any questions, don't be afraid to message me through eBay. Um, I'm there pretty much all the time. I'm always checking. So take care and good luck with your build.